Hi, I'm Chilin Fallon Reed, and this week we will be exchanging our pain for promises. Matthew 28 10. And lo, I will be with you even until the end of time. According to some scholars, there are 3,500 promises made by God in the Bible. One report claims that there are more than 300,000 promises. Whichever it turns out to be, whichever is correct, it's irrelevant. The Bible is full of promises made by a promise-keeping God. Some of these promises were made to specific people, such as the promise to Abraham, in which God said that he would make him the father of many nations. He promised Mary that she would conceive a son who would save the world. Jesus promised his disciples that he would return, and he did with his resurrection. And he's coming again. Abraham waited decades and even tried to subvert God's plan with the birth of Ishmael. But God's promise held through despite man's intervention, and Sarah gave birth to Isaac when it was thought absolutely impossible. Mary's promise came very quickly. Some promises require patience and long-suffering as God tests you to find out and to be sure that you can handle the responsibilities and benefits when the promises are fulfilled. Some require you to perform certain tasks and to stretch your faith. In the promise to heal the land, God lays down conditions. The promise to heal requires the people called by his name, not just any people, but those who belong to him, to firstly humble themselves. Humility brings you to a place where you can recognize and accept that God is in control and that he reigns supreme. Having put self aside, the next step is to pray. Not just any prayer, but a prayer of repentance for the deeds which have caused the land to be in need of healing. Your prayer must then be followed by seeking God's face and not his hand. Too many of us seek God's hand and not God's face. Too many of us are waiting with expectancy for God's mercy, grace, and handouts Then, when what he really desires is for us to seek him, his face, to get to know him. And when we get to know him intimately, his hands will open willingly. Having sought and found God's face, you must now turn from your wicked ways. And that's where the whole thing falls apart for some people. That's where many people falter. If you're reluctant to turn and leave behind your wicked ways, then you cannot claim and receive the promise that comes with this particular scripture. For only when you complete the requirements, which is to turn from your wicked ways, will God hear from heaven and forgive your sins and heal you and heal the land. Your pain can be exchanged for promises, great promises that can heal your heart and spirit, but you have to take actions to receive them. Let's examine some of God's promises and how we can receive these promises. God promises believers eternal life if you accept his son Jesus Christ as the Messiah sent as a ransom for our sins. So believe. God promises security. He never promised that we would have a life free of pain and suffering. On the contrary, Jesus warned his disciples. He told his followers that they would be persecuted and that people would say all manner of evil things about them. But he promised that he would never leave and they would never be alone. In Psalm 23, David stands on the promise of God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Now, it's very important that you understand that you are passing through the valley of the shadow of death. You are not there to stay. You are passing through, and God will be with you. In the book of Matthew, God reminds us that the birds do not work or sow, yet they're taken care of. And how much more important are we than the birds? Remember, we are made in his image and likeness. There is security in God's hands. God promises prosperity. Now, the modern world has defined prosperity in very, very narrow terms. Money and all that it can buy. God defines prosperity in different terms. Blessings, abundant. If you can shift your prosperity focus just a little bit, 
from the things of the world to the things of God, you may find that you are more prosperous than you ever imagined. God promises comfort. When Jesus left the earth, he promised his disciples that the Father would send a comforter to dwell with us. The Holy Spirit plays the role of the comforter, reminding us that in our darkest moments, our worst moments, that God still loves us and that there is still always hope. So numerous are God's promises that you could spend years receiving them into your life. Exchange your pain for the promises of God. And while you wait to receive, remember to do your part in the fulfillment of those promises. There are promises that will take away your pain. Focus on the promises. Focus on doing those things that will give you the benefit of the promises. And little by little, exchange that pain for promises. Your thought for this week, God promises to secure my future. And your activity for this time, use the internet, a Bible dictionary, or some other resource and write down the promises of God that apply to your life. They may not all apply, but look for the ones that apply to your life. Write them down and start working towards those promises fulfilled. Thank you for joining me again on my podcast. Remember to check out my website, jfallonreed.com. Look me up on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. And of course, find me on my social media. I can't wait to hear from you.